So it's late. It's late in the evening. It's actually past midnight. And I'm standing right outside of Fort William Henry, the living museum and restoration located here in Lake George, New York. And if you're familiar with James Fenimore Cooper's 1826 novel, Last of the Mohicans, or the many adaptations made of the novel since, or if you just paid attention in high school, you will recognize this name as being a very important historical place during the French and Indian War. In 1757, a siege took place here involving the British, the French Canadian, and Iroquois Indians. Hundreds, if not thousands, of people lost their lives right here on this property. This museum is closed, not just because it's midnight, but because they're not open during the winter season. I can't get inside, obviously. So why did I come here so late at night and to such a place that for most would be absolutely terrifying just to be on the property after dark? Well, like many tourist destinations, especially places that have seen tragedy like Fort William Henry, Lake George offers ghost tours evening ghost tours. Now these are only going to be conducted during the summer season, so I am completely out of luck. But since I'm staying right here at the Fort William Henry Resort and Conference Center, I thought I'd come on out. I thought I'd come on out and conduct my own improvised ghost tour without trespassing, without breaking any laws, rules, or regulations. I thought I'd have a, a look-see around the property and to see if I could uh, brave the storm. I don't get scared. I'm not, I'm not one to get scared in the dark at night when it's cold and snowy. So I suppose if there was going to be a place where angry specters of the netherworld would haunt the living, it would be at a place like Fort William Henry where such atrocities, atrocities, Atrocious, atroc where bad things have happened. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm a self proclaimed professional when it comes to ghosts, but I've watched enough Discovery Channel programs, Travel Channel programs to have a basic understanding of how the ghost operates. So, I'm going to use my skills that I've obtained from cable networks and see what kind of hauntings what mystery we can unfold. Wow, okay, so an appropriate place to start. Cemetery. So the cemetery is located in this direction. And like I said, an appropriate place to start is the cemetery. There's a lot more light down here though. It's dark. And look at that ominous light. Oh man. I'm not kidding. See, this is when your mind plays tricks on you. I don't know if you can see this. There's a cannon right there. You see that cannon? In the darkness of the night, I honestly thought that that was two people walking uh, over by the fort wall. It was not. So, still no ghost sightings yet. So we have a beautiful spotlight on this western fortified wall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go I'm going to go touch the wall. Now, on these Discovery Channel, Travel Channel show programs, they say if you, you know, you touch something that has supernatural powers, your breathing will slow down, you'll act differently, your eyes will get dilated, you know, your personality will change. I'm going to touch the wall and see if anything mystical or strange or absurd happens. If I start acting strange in the next couple moments, call the authorities, tell them I'm in Lake George, Fort William Henry, and that I've become possessed by a spirit. Okay, nothing happened. No suspense or aggravation to my nervous system. Uh, my pulse seems to be okay. 
I don't think if there's ghosts on the property, I guess they're not inhabiting this western wall. I think that's what we just proved. So, another one for the books. Is that a phrase? Another one for the books? Yeah, for like history. Like the history books. I put it in the text for, for the kids. For the kids in high school. The candle enthusiast was here for William Henry. Experienced no supernatural, no metaphysical activities. But I'm not done yet. Let's go. Strange noises. That's all I have to say. Strange noises. I haven't seen anything other than what I thought was a short man and a large man like George and Lenny from Of Mice and Men walking side by side. Lenny was looking for his bunnies. Your mind does miraculous things. That's all I can say. This stone wall. I mean, this kind of looks like original stuff. I mean, it's, it's not. This is something we would certainly see in a horror film, a Dracula film. Touch the wall. You know what, I'm gonna try this. So I'm gonna put my ear up against this stone and see if we can hear anything suspicious. It's cold. Whoa, that's cold. Yeah, no sound, no sound. Am I really this pale? My God, I'm just noticing this. Look at my face. I do have fair lily white skin. But come on. Oh man, check this out. See if I can get some extra light here. So I have my cell phone providing a little extra illumination. Most of the windows here at Fort William Henry are boarded up. There's this one solo window that is not boarded up. I don't know if it, the board fell down or what's going on, but I think this is a great opportunity to take a look, listen, and maybe even a smell to see what's going on inside. And then I'm gonna get the heck out of here. So I'm gonna shine some light in here because it's very, very dark. I'm looking in through the window right now. I got the camera on the inside of the window. There's no glass or anything. Oh man. So being completely sincere for a moment, I'm getting a big whiff of uh, the inside, this uh, this building here, this like foyer. It's, uh, first of all, it's an amazing earthy smell, very earthy, very woodsy, and I'm not kidding. I visited this place many times when I was a, a child, and man, it immediately brings me back. It's amazing how our sense of smell embeds its imprint in our brain, where just smelling this one room can actually bring me back close to 20 years. So I have scoured the southern and the western walls of Fort William Henry. I've used my skills, my training to observe and to detect supernatural activity. The northern and the eastern walls are gonna be fenced off and I definitely don't want to trespass. Forgetting that it's a museum, just this location in general, definitely not something I want to abuse. But I think I can give you my final conclusion there is no supernatural or metaphysical activities going on here. But with that said, never say never. Take that for what you will. That's my advice to you. Let's go see some more. So right now we're at the southern end of Lake George. Stationed right there is the Minnehaha Steamboat. And up this hill, just a short distance, are the fortified walls of Fort William Henry. Now it's very hard to see with the night sky behind us, but we're looking at about 25 foot walls. And if this was actually the height of the real walls back in the 1700s, you could easily imagine how this fort was sieged upon. I think you could probably do an easy Batman and Robin grappling hook throw over this wall. Maybe I couldn't myself, but somebody could. Pepsi Cola, nothing like seeing Pepsi Cola refreshments outside of a, a national living museum. Again, one that has seen such terrible tragedy. But you know what? I guess the tourists need to replenish their fluids. I am absolutely positively not kidding. Um, the fort is behind me, but in the direction of the lake, right there in the Minnehaha, I just heard the most absurd sound. I'm not kidding. It sounded like when you open up an old 
wooden creaky door in an ancient house. Only the creaking lasted for about 25 to 30 seconds and then just suddenly stopped uh, as soon as I turned the camera on. Uh, I highly doubt there are any living souls on the Minnehaha right now. This is stationed for the winter. This doesn't go anyplace. So what was once a kind of tongue-in-cheek play and fun ghost tour uh, adventure that I set out on, I now find myself about a quarter of a mile away from the hotel and um, a little bit terrified. I wanted to get some shots of the Minnehaha. I think the Minnehaha was, is gonna have to be saved. You know what? We're on a ghost tour. Oh God, I'm scaring myself. So did we know who Minnehaha was? So Minnehaha was the lover of Hiawatha. Hiawatha was an epic poem, the song of Hiawatha. It was one of Walt Disney's big inspirations as a child. And yeah, tragically, sadly, Minnehaha died in Hiawatha's arms. So here it is, the Minnehaha. It's a steamboat. I don't believe that it's steam powered anymore. I could be completely wrong about that. It is a, a very historic vessel for this town and it actually has its own port. Where did that noise come from? I've yet to hear it again. There's something about being down by the water next to these boats that's really giving me the chills a whole lot more than actually the fort itself. Okay, the bad news is I'm like officially creeped out right now. The good news is it definitely does sound like a door. There's no such thing as ghosts, ghosts, goblins, creatures of the night. There's always an explanation, a reasonable, rational, scientific explanation. All right, so I'm on the dock here. Many ha-has here. So this is what I think we just heard. What I believe is happening, the bow of the ship is rubbing up against this massive piping of rubber. Uh, this way the boat can come in and bounce off that rubber. It doesn't crash into the dock. But as this boat teeters and totters, it's making that horrible squealing noise on that rubber bumper. And that solves the mystery of the haunts of Minnehaha. You know, I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna sleep a lot easier tonight knowing that Minnie's not gonna come and get me in my sleep. Normally, normally, I'm an incredibly brave and rock solid kind of person. I'm in the middle of the road. This is just a testament to how dead this town really is during this time of year. So I'm walking along the ledge of the lake and I know you can't see it. I can't see it either. It's incredibly dark. But through that darkness, through that blackness, through that emptiness, that void of space, lies miles and miles of Lake George. And being here so late at night by myself and with the surroundings being as quiet as they are, you almost get this feeling of timelessness. Time goes away. Has this ever happened to you? It's as if you're among today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Everything that's ever happened here and that will occur here is essentially in the now. I actually find it to be a very hopeful feeling. Timelessness. Here at the southern shore of Lake George, right outside of Fort William Henry, a very large, unforgotten part of our nation's history. 
So just to be perfectly clear, I was in no way mocking or making light of the history of Fort William Henry. I'm just having a little bit of fun. Late night, look-see around the property, a little bit of an adventure. If I'm making fun of anyone just a little bit, maybe it's these ghost tours. Look, I love ghost tours, but this is a living museum. Teach the kids something, educate them, book learning, all that good stuff, right? Save the ghosts for downtown. I'm sure the tours are very respectful to not only the history, but to the people of Lake George and the ancestors of those that were involved in the French-American War. So I sincerely hope that I did not offend anyone and that no one took this as mockery. Just wanna make that clear. Nice, brisk, cold midnight walk, although it's well past midnight now. So I'm gonna be heading back to my room and getting a good night's sleep because I have to wake up early tomorrow to record another segment for the candle enthusiast. So for me, signing out from Lake George, New York, Fort William Henry, I'll see you guys real soon. Whoa. Literally just walked into that. If that closing lasted just one more second, I would have plummeted to the ground. Good night. It's late at night, past midnight, and I'm standing right outside of Fort William Henry's, uh, it's not Henry's, it's not his place. Or if you've, you're, you're, you're taken uh, 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 well, if you're, if you, if you, if you, if you've been, if someone has commanded your, your soul, 